got to be the Enigma tools and the Krat City, the Krat City key he gave me. That other stuff had to be from the, the bad guy. Oh, the donkey, the donkey reference. Oh, man, I wonder if I actually have enough time to talk about this. We're at an hour and five. Yeah, why not? Why not? Because, oh, I hit that. Because, I mean, I got to go with, I got to go where my mind takes me, right? All right. All right, welcome back to episode two. Uh, here, where a hidden dragon philosophy's professor plays through the lies of P. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to continue right where we left off at hidden dragon philosophy, where we take time with the classics to awaken that hidden dragon within all of us. All right, so here we go. Let's continue the game. Man, last we left off, I was I was kind of blown away with the idea that the uh, the ergos the the ergo the therefore allows me to get stronger. You know, <sighs> use my power, Sophia, the power of wisdom. It's like, you know, there's there's so many platitudes about wisdom. You know, the the, the big one is always like knowledge is power. Ah, it's her. And this is my hotel. Welcome. Oh, so you think puppet or not? I knew from the moment we met the Georgia Petto's puppet. Mm. He did have a few loose screws, but Geppetto's skills are unblemished. Hmm. A shame. Marveling in the handiwork. He took off for Elysian Boulevard. And he never came back. If it doesn't turn up soon. We'll have to make a new coffin. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I was keeping this for you. It comes with a long story. But I think it's better off with you. Please find that old man. You do take care of yourself out there. I hope this doesn't affect my play right here. Oh, new outfits. Showing off some clothes, huh? All right, now I, I like what I have. Oh, should we ask her about lying? People have no idea, so many thanks for keeping me company. I see you're here. Means you can lie. That your lives are a rare ability. You're able to choose your own path, unbound by faith. The ability to lie People allows you to choose your own path. still afraid of puppets. Lie to protect yourself and find your path. Mm -hmm. I'm an yeah. old friend of Geppetto's. His son is like family to me. Make yourself at home. You if you have any questions, ask my butler. Ask the butler if you have any questions. Yeah, so like one of the platitudes is obviously, you know, knowledge is power, you know. But in all honesty, knowledge is more than power. It's freedom. So Hotel Kratz is one of the city's creepiest and most mysterious buildings. According to the lore, Hotel Kratz is an isolated castle built by the aristocrat devoted to a form of occultism after receiving the revelation from the Radiant Tree. At one point, it was used as a mental institution, and some patients said they saw hallucinations. However, no record remains as they were all destroyed in a large, in a large fire. Above all, being so far underground just compounds the rumor. Some even said that it is connected to an unknown hell. But now the rumors have served to embellish the charm of Hotel Krat, which has been re re uh, renovated to the latest style. And the recent rumors of the grand exhibition, Ghost Hotel Spread, more customers are actually looking to stay at the hotel. Yeah, that will do it. Next, at the, next is a comment from the hotel owner, Mrs. Antonia. A ghost hotel? I've heard that more times than I can remember, but um, but fortunately, our hotel guests are brave like lions. It's no problem at all. Rating four out of five. Creepy and mystical. Best resort in Krat. Uh, report Midoro. This guide was made to the support of Venigni Company, a friend of the city. All right, there we go. So, like I said, knowledge is freedom, you know? Um, the more you know, the less you need to rely on somebody else's information. You know, anytime somebody goes to like an auto mechanic, I'm actually a third generation auto mechanic. I don't have my license, but you know, my father's a mechanic, my grandfather's a mechanic. Kind of sound like my cousin Vinny right now, but uh, 
Yeah, I know how to fix a car. Anyway, those people who know nothing about cars go to mechanics. And I think uh, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, George Costanza from Jerry Seinfeld, the show, he once joked about that. Oh, you need a new, like, uh, sprinkle gauge or something like that. Oh, I'm going to need a new Johnson rod or something like that. Ah, oh, lock tight. All right. Uh, yeah, so people can take advantage of you. Because knowledge is not only power, it's freedom. The more you know, the less you need to rely on somebody else's knowledge. So knowledge is freedom. It also makes me wonder why some want to keep people stupid. Oh, that's a puppet right there. Welcome to Hotel Croft. My name is Polandina. Polandina. to Lady Antonia. Please let me know how I met Hotel Crot. Comfort and calm walk hand. Welcome to Hotel Crot. Oh, you can buy things here? Okay. Activate special ability when equipped. Uh, there's a special kind of ergo with different colors. So, all right. Uh, it can be thrown to draw enemies' attention. Uh, interesting. I'm definitely not using that for what it's supposed to be used for. Should I talk to him? Welcome to oh, shoot. I said shoot. The Grand Covenant is a set of absolute commands imprinted on puppets when they are made. The Grand First Covenant. Law, all puppets must obey their creator's commands. No autonomy. Second law, a puppet may not harm humans. Non-maleficence. A puppet protects and serves humans. And the city of Krat. Beneficence. Fourth law. A puppet cannot lie. Mm. I've told you about the laws engraved upon every puppet. Yep, so four laws. So then they don't have autonomy. You're here to see Master Geppetto, right? Come this way. Come this I way. I heard about you from Geppetto, but to see you in person. Wow. Mm. You should take this. Geppetto left it with me. Just the arm. I did play the demo, so I kind of know what's coming up, yeah. So the Legion arm. Modified in all sorts of forms. Uh, the Nigni craft machine. All right, so puppet string. All right, so I think we're ready. This is a training hall, so this is not the way out. I forget which way is the way out. Oh, well, she's there, so yeah. Back to the streets. I don't know how to get to that other, that extra baggage, uh, that extra bag that he has can't seem to get to that this this extra bag down here do i need to look it up let's see throw throw an object so i can plan my attacks better something like you know Bar batman arkham arkham city arkham asylum that ability all right let's continue on here we go i can already feel this thing it's, it's messing up as the bandage Comes undone. Cut myself while I was cooking dinner for the family. Ergo is a miraculous power stone that could only be found in Krat. For many years, Ergo allowed Krat to gain incredible wealth and technology, as well as a curse. Hmm. What's the curse of the therefores? Is it something like uh, Scar? You know, the more I know, the more of an ego I get, the more I believe, since I know so much, I don't need to learn anything else. The more I know, the less I become as stoic. Ooh. Hey, let's be more careful. Be more stoic as a uh, Socrates to know that I know nothing. But don't be alarmed. My name is Gemini. We'll talk later when we're safe. Uh, 
I don't need to do that. Switch. Talk with Gemini. I'm Gemini, your friendly puppet guide. Or friendly guide puppet? I don't know, one of those. I'm also a friend of Sophia's. Last time I woke up, Sophia was Stop there bleeding. because... Because she woke me up. But I'm sure there are still other memories in there. Sorry. Must be the shock. Bear with me, and I'll do my best to guide you. Mm-hmm. So she woke him up, too. Alright, got our first villain. Let's get our sea legs back. <laughs> Reminds me of that Dark Soul beam. Okay, cool. I will roll and I'll roll and then you'll hit me. <clears throat> Jeez, need to use this already? Alright, I need to get focused here. Elysian Boulevard was a regular rich people row. You wanted fancy boutiques and shops. <laughs> no place better. That was long ago. Before the puppet frenzy. Always the rich that they go after first. Makes you wonder if, like, revolution always starts from a place of resentment. Oh, we got a gun. Yeah, just saw that. A little too late to two guns. Nope, nope, just one. Wow, that bullet has travel time. That's nice. It's like a bow and arrow. Damn, he still swings faster than me. Travel time bullet. Alright, you're gonna fire, and then I'll be able to roll after that. I think I might like the dexterity build better. Uh, these swings are. Swings are taking a lot longer than I thought, which is funny because when I first played, it felt faster, but here I am getting comfortable. Or getting used to the timing, and then I was like, oh, that's a little too slow. It's like when a person wins the lottery and they still spend, they, they overspend the percentage that they win or they get and then they go broke because they didn't know how to manage money. Woohoo! And he still hit me. And I win. And I got another one back there. Okay. I'm going to die fast. That didn't work. He got me, though. Huh? Oof. Right. Oh, he loaded already. That was stupid. Thought I had a little bit more time to load. Whew, he actually should have hit me there. He got robbed. toy. Oh, a puppet. Oh. oh, man. He was able to tank that. Okay. Lie or die. There is no way around it. Yeah, I remember that guy. Alright. Should I try to build the dex build? Let's try that. Let's try that. Let's see. Let's 
go to Hotel Kratz. Yeah. I'm going to try the Dex build. I was watching somebody use it, and I got jealous. They were still doing pretty good damage, although I'm not proper Dex build right now, am I? Mm, no, I'm not. No, no, no. Let's not. Let's not. Second thought. Hmm. <sighs> Let's avoid the grass is always greener and let's just adapt. I went with the great sword build and that's what we're going to stick with. At least until I can respect my points. I blocked in between those attacks. <laughs> oh, which means the blocking couldn't have got worse. I was blocked in between. He hit me blocked and I let go and he hit me again. Hilarious. Yeah, I'm getting rid of this guy first. Oh, well, that's helpful. A long animation when you grab something. Interesting. I was supposed to. Oh, so it's not a three hit combo, it's just one, huh? It's just one big swing. Okay. I thought I could actually hit it tw uh, three times. Like poison and stuff like that. Like Christmas music stuck in my head. Do they know it's Christmas time? Oh man, I rolled right into that. guy this beefy puppet puppet behind me get my air going on Bait. Be nice if I could take advantage of it terrible time though I see it was three but the last time I just didn't have enough Oh, wrong button. Holy crap. And am I going to push myself over the edge there? Interesting. Oh, that was a good reach. Ooh, I thought. Ah, I didn't get the... Damn, I didn't get the hit. Probably why people stream these. I interact with the chat, etc., etc. Can't imagine people have a lot of interesting things to say when they're by themselves. I try though. Ah, too, too early. So, if I'm able to get one back, there's no reason not to use it and then fight to, to get the recharge. Oh, that sucks. There 
I go back up? I just looked at my sharpener and I was like, oh, I haven't done that in a while. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, man, once you get hit, there's just no coming back. Chimney sweeper. Saw that double take right there, like, wait, oh, there is something there. They're already giving me bridges where one person's on the other side with a distance weapon. And then you have one guy on the bridge so you can't bypass them. So we're already doing that this early in the game, huh? that kind of strategy. Well, yeah, I hit him, not me. Oh, that whiff almost cost me. That's going to cost me. Yep, all the way through. Uh, well, I had one opportunity, well, one warning the first time I whiffed with the chimney sweeper, that was my warning. Don't whiff again because you know you will die. And there we went. We died. <clears throat> All right. And I don't need to kill everything. I just need to kill what's in my way. Is that that completionist attitude where I was like, I got to kill every single person? So that backswing was faster than me. Interesting. That guy doesn't return? That's kind of nice. Now look at that. I'm not going to get through there, am I? That was a fast attack right there. So, <clears throat> gotta beat him. Yep. That's nice. Get the back attack. <clears throat> I avoid that, right? Yep. Yeah, that's how I waited. And lateral. Well, he he went around. I probably will, but, I mean, not that time. Like, not immediately. Oh, the doorway. Have you ever seen the doorway actually get in the way of your enemy puppets in this game? Okay, I remember this guy. He kicked my butt last time. I get a free hit? Nope. Costed me. And there's that guy. Didn't even... That's great. 
side over here. Nope. That was fortunate. Shortcut. Might as well. I'm just start getting the recharge. Jiminy emergency protection. I have no idea what that does. And look at you, huh? Come on, buddy. Really? No back attack. I swear I'm hitting the button to, to roll. Wow, and he like literally back attack there with some speed. I think you're gonna attack? No, only when I actually press a button. Yeah. That's nice. He actually looked like he felt that one. Just in case. What's frustrating is when I feel like the computer is reacting to my button presses. That's that's something that really irritates me, you know? Back in the day, like, I used to play Mega Man, and oh, I loved that game. You had to really take it upon yourself to learn. Hold up. Who is it? Is that you, Murphy? Not really. Oh. No. I guess not. Murphy is a super, super cool, cool police officer. officer. As a puppet. As a puppet, even the petrification disease can't get him. I wish I was like him. Reminds me of like Renona Ryder when she's old and Edward Scissorhands. You should leave so you don't catch the disease from me. Oh, she doesn't know. She doesn't know I'm a puppet. So that's interesting, like a disease written place. Right? A disease written place. And it's popping out of nowhere. So yeah. You have what is an essentially a, a disease or a plague. I bet it's I bet it's connected to the the frenzy. The frenzy is what they call it. Disease of the humans, disease of the robots at the same time. It's the irony they're playing with. Insulation converter. These are really interesting items. Like I should actually take a look at them sometimes, you know? Oh, gives me electricity power. That's cool. I don't even know what this is. Enhanced material, so... Legion arm. Defensive parts. Increases attribute resistance. Penge parts that increases attribute, attribute resistance. Um, electric shock. 
looked better. Looked better in all ways right there. Any amulets? Nothing to show for amulets. Okay. No second weapon just yet. Well, they want me to go upstairs, but I know it's awaiting me there, and I have zero, zero health. Zero Estus flasks. Mm-hmm. Look who's waiting for me. And who's waiting for me. And the bait. Can't climb up that way. I get this guy. There we go. That's where I climb up. <clears throat> uh uh. Uh uh. I am not reading that just yet. How was that bait? Oh, here, read. material what useful material did it just give me let's see was that it the legion magazine mm, probably should have read it right oh the moonstone that's right upgrade normal oh okay okay yeah we don't have the, the shop yet to upgrade that is that info Warning, petrification disease, quarantine zone, no trespassers. Yeah, when, um, that is a great way to ensure that a civilization falls way too far into order, in tyranny, a plague. And you see cleanliness jump up, and, I mean, we kind of got that with, you know, what happened a couple years ago. I find that. I found it absolutely incredible. Although it shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have been a surprise. It's something that always happens when disease uh, strikes. People become extremely tyrannical. Obviously, you know they're afraid for their own lives. You know, that's a bait. I wonder if I can get this. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I can get hit. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out the hard way, aren't I? If I can actually get hit during that. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness, a stargazer. My goodness. Alright, now I can fight this guy. Oh wait, let's let's level up. Do I have to actually teleport to her to level up every single time? I totally forgot about that part. I thought I was it. No. On one of the stargazers, I was able to level up, right? The one before I met her? Or is that the only stargazer? And is that what she meant by, you know, she, she couldn't get to them all? Just make sure I'm not bleeding anymore. All right, um, I don't feel like I'm doing really good damage. Oh, I do need that stamina, though. Yeah, I'll put three to stamina. I'm running out of it real fast. Let's actually pretend that I'm, you know, that I'm not equal, but balanced. Let's, let's pretend that I'm balanced. Uh, let's see. Should I start using these? Let's do it. Hmm. I might as well while I'm here. Hmm. Hmm. You 
using the ergo. Probably going to be a very boring part of the video. I'm not going to use the rare ergo because in what is that Elden Ring like you could use the the boss's ergo that that rare one for special items so it doesn't make sense to pop those you know it's giving me a little bit more vitality Ooh, a lot more vitality okay then let's get some attack back up yeah yes all right now let's teleport I wonder why it's Stargazer though, you know? Like what was the what was the decision behind calling that a Stargazer? You know, so so what is the nature of stargazing? To look beyond you? One thing I, that always um happened, because I, I mean I live in Hawaii, so I, I love uh we used to love to go up to the mountain and look up at the stars. And because I'm on the big island and we have uh, astronomy towers were actually not allowed a lot of lights. That's why people who come to the Big Island they are really like set back because we don't have a lot of lights by our highways, by our roads. We only have them during the intersections. So outside of like the intersections and then like the stoplights, we don't have a lot of lights. But what that means is when you go up the mountain and like here in volcano, if it's a clear night, it is the most beautiful stargazing and i think honestly if you think about like stargazing stargazing kind of humbles your humbles you you know it's like you start to realize just how small you are in the world so there's a there's a humility to it you know it, it has a humbling it has a humbling character i shouldn't have pressed again it has a humbling characteristic to it you know I don't know why I'm. I don't know why I'm charging there. That didn't do anything. Can I actually get it? Oh. Another time I do not get it. I charged it though. It's a bummer. That didn't kill. I was dead, wasn't I? <laughs> that was rhetorical. Everybody knew it. Y'all knew it. That didn't hit. I was dead. Was that like a Masonic symbol on that treasure chest? But yeah, so stargazing. Stargazing has a way of humbling you because you, you start you start to imagine like your place in existence, you know, and just how far and how vast everything is. But so that's one way to put it. But another way is how how people oh I'm like spitting into the mic. Not spitting, popping into the mic. Um how people use the stars to kind of predict things, right? astrology and things like that look up into the sky start seeing uh start seeing pictures um and I start recognizing that hey this this picture it's been here before you know i gotta make sure what to be aware of my surroundings i mean you would think as a fighting game player i have that but that's actually one of my, the things i struggle with like remembering if I'm almost at the corner and things like that. Other than Street Fighter, Street Fighter does a very good job of making sure you re you realize when you're getting close to the corner. But like Dragon Ball and stuff like that, I always forget how close to the corner I am. I actually lost the tournament, putting myself in the damn corner. Coming up. No, I'll come down. I missed. How embarrassing. Yeah, my coach was there watching me at Evo. Man, my first 
the first day at Evo, I actually did very well. I played out of my mind. The second day, where like one of my best friends had showed up and my my coach was actually watching me, I played like crap. I almost prefer that nobody watched me and I just played the way I did. And, I mean, obviously though, I, I mean that just you know in in hindsight. I, I love the fact that they were there and. The things that you need are not always the ones that you are aware of, you know? So the way I take it is, yeah, I might have played worse, but that right there was training. Eventually there's going to be somebody who watches me or or is talking smack behind me, and I won't care as much because I got used to the fact that, like, my friends and my coach were sitting there watching me. So you never know what you need in order to be better, you know? Well, at least that's... That's the, the going the going idea, you know. As far as character improvements and stuff like that, you you often don't know what you need. Oh man, I had a great discussion with my supervisor today, specifically about that. Um, to kind of paint the picture. I'm going the wrong way. To kind of paint the picture. We were discussing how you know in teams and stuff like that in team building um that sometimes there are no yeah i was uh, maybe i shouldn't talk about that <laughs> all right well i'll leave it i'll leave it as vague as i can um to to just bring it to topic so one of the discussions uh we were having is how to approach self-actualization how to improve yourself and that's kind of where i was getting at right um you often don't know what you need because honestly if you think about it if you knew you'd probably do something about it if you actually knew that your life would be better you might do something about it although you know i can i can imagine some things that people do that they know are harmful but they keep doing it anyway you know that's kind of like an addict uh what what aristotle would refer to as the apolosticos so anyway the discussion we were having is it's it's phenomenal it's not phenomenal it's absolutely characteristic that some people will just tell themselves what they need to know oh man really i can't i can't roll again after that i might have hit it too late some people will just tell themselves tell themselves the stories that they need to tell themselves in order to go to sleep at night you know they'll make um they'll make excuses for why things happen they'll shirk the blame so it's not about them uh so that, that they're not looking inward or maybe they didn't make the mistake you know i was a i was a middle school teacher for a while trust me the world is full of uh individuals who will not look at themselves first will look at every other thing possible except for themselves as the reason for x or y to to happen i feel like i'm going in circles um not in the conversation although that might be but in this oh no 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 oh i remember this guy okay yeah i remember him and i remember over here Weeping woman. This must be your first for most people. It's their last. You're a good Samaritan for coming on. Yeah, they, they think I'm a human. I won. The favor. My family took my baby from me and sent me here. So and somebody took her baby. Said it was for my own baby. It must be with its, must mother. Be with its mother. Bring me back my baby. You want me to steal a baby and bring her back to your putrid Oh, no, that's, you can do anything you want. That's a terrible idea. In the demo, I actually did it, you know, so I know what happens, but let's, more morally, come on. Okay, this guy kicked my butt in the demo. Let's see if I can do a little bit better. I know a lot of you are like, isn't this like the beginning boss? Yes, it is. Don't judge. <laughs> Ooh, my. My distance sucks. So, yeah, people will just tell themselves what they need in order to go to sleep at night. Uh, tell themselves all kind of stories. 
See, that's I, that's what I hate right there. I, I, that really irritates me. It's it's almost necessary that I roll instead of block. Wasn't my turn again. I hate when that misses. Gotta get my stamina back. Really? That was the stun, though, right? That's nice. Got it when I needed it, right? Oh my god. That's the distance? Oh, whiffed again. Oh my god, so this time the trade didn't work in my favor. The last time it did. Man, my my distance with this with this weapon sucks. No, like not the distance of the weapon, my distance at gauging the distance of this weapon. My ability to gauge the distance of this weapon sucks. Alright, so this is I think this is the way. No no no, because I kill this guy and then I come this way. Yeah. I did not talk to you before. Wait, hello. <laughs> I didn't know anyone I know what you're thinking, but I'm not a bird. Don't worry. I won't cause it for your info. Well, I mean I kind of just, you know, used all that. <laughs> So, there's one thing I learned in sales. People would rather just like walk away than actually tell you what they don't want or what they don't like about something. Yes, I was in sales before. So, as a salesman, when I would be talking to the individual about their car or, you know, what they what they like, you know, sometimes that's right. I used it again. Sometimes they would say, no, I love everything about it. And, you know, they would walk. The fact is, is when somebody has what's called a hidden objection, there's something that, that's, that they don't like, but they don't want to tell somebody about it for whatever reason, right? I mean, sometimes they feel like it's too judgy of them or whatever. Like they didn't like the smell or they didn't like the, the color of the vehicle. And they just don't want to come off petty, so they just walk. But the thing is, is if they walk, you lose, right? In sales, at least. If they walk, you lose. So you have to ask questions in a way that doesn't in a way that doesn't make you like lose the sale but you need to find that hidden objection. Now I can imagine that as supervisors in order to find that hidden objection as in like what they don't like about you or something like that that takes a delicate balance right there, you know? What? That takes a delicate balance right there. But you need to find it. And you need to find it because bad intentions or something like that can actually like poison your team. But more important, and, and that's not what she was talking about. I'm going to fall with him. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that killed me. And I just lost all that ergo. Um, I saw something she was talking about. I was having that conversation. Uh, I, I'm thinking of a previous conversation. The conversation she and I were, were talking about actually had to do with me. That uh, I had some preconceived ideas on uh, certain intentions. And I just had to be honest. I had to be honest with the intentions. But see, here's the thing. I was able to have the discussion on where I, where I thought... Where I, what I was worried about, you know? Things that held me back from doing my job well. Oh, God. That's so nice that we have a wall right there to stop me. It won't stop them. They can keep moving around, but it will stop me every single time. And is this where the... 
Yeah, this is where the butterfly was, yeah? Yes, okay. I'm starting to draw the map in my head. So yeah, it was, <clears throat> it was something about me <clears throat> where I had a, a prejudgment on ways that I might be held back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> but my my knowledge of philosophy, to be perfectly blunt with you folks, it's it makes it started to make me think. Well, then maybe it's not her. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's a prejudgment on my part. Maybe the things that she is doing is actually in my best interest, which, which circles it back around, right, to the best interest discussion that we were having. The fact is, is that that hidden objection, that hidden internal intuition, not a lot of people do that. They would rather just go to sleep with their, their own story in their mind. You know, that it's not my fault, it's that person's fault. Three, okay. Um, it's that person's fault right there. It's not me or anything I'm doing, you know, I'm perfect. Uh, although when you say that, they're like, oh, no, nobody's perfect, right? But, um, yeah, there's the third. Boom. That is the stun, but it's not... I don't get the kill. Boom. I probably shouldn't have attacked right there, because usually after he does that, he does another attack, right? I'm waiting too long. But in sales, the person will just leave. <clears throat> As a supervisor, those kind of individuals that kind of have those ulterior, mo not ulterior motives, that's that's not fair. It, it, it's more of like their preconceived judgments on your actions, you know? It's hard to, for some people to pull themselves out of that. It's like their first impression is king, you know? It's unfortunate, but that does seem like the case sometimes, though, you know? Yeah, I don't need the, the other one. This this weapon does a good job of, of taking care of that. Oh, that's nice. Should I go back up and heal since... Oh, no, the Stargazer was kind of a little ways away, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I need to start reading this stuff. Ah, all right, all right, all right. It itches, peel the skin. Blah, 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 blah. I'm alive. Wait, wait, wait. It itches, peel the skin. There's blue blood. Blood, blood. Pretty cotton. Blue angel. Blue angel. Joyful appetite. Blue death. What a feast. Uh, death, death, and death. I'm alive. It itches. I'm alive. Yeah, well... Blue Fairy, what did you do? Ah, I recognize these from Dark Souls. Uh -huh. Oh, come on. I got the back. Ah, he got us before me. Kind of looked like he healed, though, huh? Getting the the distance. I'm getting it down. But I feel for supervisors. Like I've never been a supervisor. Um, I've just always been an educator. I just I love teaching, you know. And philosophy is my passion. Like 
man, I can't even imagine what I would be without it. It turned my life around from somebody who used to get in fights at, at, uh, at the beach and things like that over stupid things to a lover of wisdom, Philosophia. Nice. I hope this brings me to the merchant. That was the only other, other elevator I saw. Not to come off across like I am a fighter or anything like that. I'm not any UFC fighter or anything like that. Uh, I know Hawaii people, <laughs> people that come to, um, people who come to Hawaii are like, man, why does everybody know how to fight in Hawaii? Well, we're, we're brawlers. I wouldn't say we all know how to fight, but you don't, you 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 don't go through Hawaii without you know beef, as they call it, you know, without skin on skin every so often. But no, uh, the technique of, of fighting, hardly. But, um, yeah, philosophy saved me in much more than one. In much more than one. In much more than one way. Ah, ah, ah. Should I just run through? I mean, <clears throat> I've beaten them already, so. Open slower. All puppets will be destroyed. I remember this guy. It's like the donkey from, yeah, the mad donkey. You and the alchemist scheming together. Tell me the truth. Okay. What's your problem? I'm here for the old man. Get lost. Wait. I know you. Well, more like I know what you are. You're the devil's puppet. Hmm. You can't sneak. Point of view, huh? Die! Can I move yet? No, thank you. All right. Mad Donkey has some life, man. Stop showing up all that was a fast swing. That was like that Tom and Jerry episode where you drew a line. <laughs> I was right there at that line. Okay, that, that is very, that is a straight line right there. Just, just deck to the side. Oh, good dodge. I can never get that. God. I'm getting frustrated now because I can never get that. And there's that Dark Souls weight right there. Oh my god, uh, how many texts am I gonna get? No more. Mm, nah, I'm just getting frustrated. I get frustrated when I feel like the the game reads your input. I don't know, I said that before though. 
I, but what I wanted to exp uh, expound upon, um, what I wanted to expand upon on that though, is like back back in the day there were certain t rhythms, and you could you could kind of figure out the way the bosses move and stuff. It takes a little while, but you know figuring out how the boss moves was crucial. You know, but nowadays I feel like they just cheat. They just cheat it out. They just they read your button presses or they read the, the, the input of the button itself and then they react. And I find that, I find that lazy difficulty, you know, absolutely lazy difficulty. See, lazy difficulty. That's helpful. It's like I'm fighting Gemini Man and I just found out like Magnet Man beats him. <laughs> Point of view will be a bitch. Some everybody's the hero in their own story, right? That's that uh, self-actualization again, right? <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness. I really, really dislike the R2 of this weapon. And then the fast one. That weight, man. Are you a dream or a nightmare? Stop coming up already. I don't know how many people that oof. I don't know how many people that played this game actually understand like the donkey reference. Wait again. Can I get out of the corner? Or are you gonna combo me to death? <clears throat> I think this is where the demo ended right here with uh, Geppetto. Oh, the donkey reference. Oh, oh, that's a that's a fascinating discussion, actually. Hold on. The blood. Oh, that was the first human we killed. That's fascinating. Son, yeah, because the donkey in Pinocchio was a human before. It's not, like this. not a puppet. I understand why some people despise me. I invented the puppets after all. I should take responsibility as their maker. But in order for me to do that, I need to take care of the puppets at City Hall. Won't you help me? Son, take this. You'll find it most useful. <sighs> Got to be the Enigma tool in the Krat City, the Krat City key he gave me. That other stuff had to be from the, the bad guy. Oh, the donkey, the donkey reference. Ah, oh, man, I wonder if I actually have enough time to talk about this. We're at an hour and five. Yeah, why not? Why not? Because oh, I hit that. Because, I mean, I got to go with, 
I got to go where my mind takes me, right? All right, so this is this is phenomenal for anybody who's actually watched Pinocchio. Um, there's a place called like uh, Pleasure Island where after Pinocchio had been lying for a while, he ends up going to Pleasure Island. But at Pleasure Island, these kids are allowed to do whatever they want to do. So they have no rules, no morality, no laws or anything like that. They can just be themselves, right? Well, what ends up happening is as they, you know, indulge in all of these vices of, of being able to do uh, whatever they want to do. I was checking the, the uh, frames per second. It kind of looked like I was lagging a little bit there. Um, so as they're allowed to do whatever they want, eventually they become jackasses. They become donkeys. Now, it's like the, the problem with that is like some people watch it and they're like, well, they become jackasses. And it's like not just jackasses. They become beasts. You know, and what this says is something that I think we've kind of lost in modernity. You know, it's something that Plato knew uh, with one of my favorite books from Plato, Plato's Republic. It's something that he explored in book two and then he answered like in book eight and book nine. But in book two, Glaucon makes kind of the modernity argument for rules and morality. He's like, look, look, Socrates, there's no value to being moral. Not at all. In fact, morality just holds people back. Because a long time ago, people used to take from one another, and there was a bunch of weaklings that all decided, you know what, we need to come together and we need to make laws. Nietzsche, Nietzsche would make this uh, argument later on. But Glaucon, he made the argument that, you know, the people who could, like, take away something and get away with it they are getting a terrible deal because the fact of the matter is a bunch of people decided that it was worse to be stolen from than it is to steal and that's only uh prevalent if you get caught doing it all right so basically in a nutshell what he's arguing for is the pleasure island that morality just holds people back there is no practical reason for morality whatsoever and the way Socrates, well, Plato through Socrates at that point, argues against it is absolutely brilliant. And I feel like we've lost this nowadays. What Socrates discusses, he, he starts like, um, he starts meditating on how people become tyrants, but he, he, li he leaves little seeds on the practicality of morality. And in book eight, he talks about something that is used in Pleasure Island. He talks about the king of Arcadia and Zeus. So the king of Arcadia wanted to trick Zeus into eating human flesh. So he cut it up and diced it up with, you know, other meat. But Zeus was very aware of what he was doing and he turned the king of Arcadia into a lichen, into like a wolf, into a beast. And what that demonstrated is what Plato was kind of like talking about what happens when you start to become tyrannical. And he uses this example to show like one mistake can like turn you into a beast. So, so hold on to that, right? But the brilliance comes in book nine. In book nine, to demonstrate that morality has actual practical uses for human beings, he starts talking about the different desires human beings have. And that, you know, there are certain desires that we need, you know, um, you know, safety, security, et cetera, et cetera. There's those kind of like desires that, that we all have and every human needs. But there are certain desires that only the law keeps in check. The ones that some people dream about when your rationality, your reason, your ability to make a rational decision is, is at rest. And what he's showing here is he's like planting these seeds with the lichen and then this aspect of morality, that there are some things that people ought never to act upon to demonstrate that if one is to keep their soul in order and the ordered soul is one where reason holds or reason keeps in line our appetites and our passions, right? Um, anybody who's taken a test when they're exhausted, they know exactly what they mean. How it's really hard for your brain to work when you're exhausted, right? In that way, your, your body 
has a hold of your mind because you can't think clearly when that happens. But there's also the appetites, right? We have certain drugs on the market right now that completely strip a person away of their autonomy. In that way, their reason is not in control. Their appetites are in control. And for Plato, that is akin to the disharmonious soul. Now we go back, right? Okay, so reason needs to be in line in order for you to make free decisions because clearly if... Uh, you're too tired or you're too angry or you're on drugs. You're not making rational decisions. You're just letting the animal, the donkey from Pleasure Island rule your decisions. Now, what does this mean for the practicality of morality? Morality keeps those things in check because you only truly make a free decision when your reason leads, not when the appetites leave when the reason leaves. And so, as you can imagine, if you have somebody who just gets whatever they want, this is at the end of book nine where he makes this argument. If you have somebody that gets whatever they want all the time, think about that spoiled brat that you saw when you were trying to eat and you're like, man, can you shut this kid up or whatever? Um, they are out of control. For Plato, their soul is tyrannical. It's absolutely disharmonized where like a gadfly he says you will just go wherever the wind takes you and in that way you are not free you are specifically led by whatever fancy or whatever desire you want at that time and nowadays we are losing that we think that being free and getting whatever we want is the only way to be free that's not the case because as human beings, we can do certain things that completely disharmonize our soul. Now, this gets even deeper down the rabbit hole when you start to examine the certain things that we do that goes too far. You know, in Breaking Bad, there was this great scene where Walter White was trying to decide because he was making so many terrible decisions when he made the decision that crossed the line. In uh, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, Raskolnikov, who uh, was an, an atheistic-minded individual, kills the, the um, it, it wasn't a sharp owner, it was a pawn store owner. And after that act, he was completely changed. He crossed a line. His soul was now in absolute disharmony because he made a decision that crossed the line. My favorite, Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe on the chance encounter of two police officers coming to check a murderer who buried, uh, buried uh, I don't know if it was his friend, but buried somebody underneath the floorboards, his guilt overcame him. What does this show? This shows that there are certain desires and certain actions that once done absolutely destroys your soul. Imagine, think about this. There are certain things that we can see. There are certain actions we can perform. There are certain desires that we can indulge in that throw our soul into absolute disharmony. That is to say, we are led purely by our desires and our rational faculties take a back seat. One of my favorite modern movies that went over this was Smile. In Smile, the individuals either did something, in the case of the main character who didn't uh, help her mother, or they saw something they could never unsee. I mean, I love in the beginning scene where we see the when we see the act, it just buries into the lady's mind. And it's like, good luck getting that out of your mind. It's what happens when soldiers go overseas and they meet enemies they never thought they would meet. So there are certain actions that can completely destroy your humanity. Now, here's the redemptive aspect. If we understand that, there's something beautiful to the moral law in that it is the thing that frees us from our appetites. It frees us from being the donkey, being the beast, being the lichen, because it's the only way human beings truly make free decisions, unfettered by their anthropology, unfettered by what Kant would call heteronomy, unfettered by just desires and passions, because those are not free decisions. And then there's one more. If there are certain acts, treacherous, horrendous, abominable acts that can throw your soul in disharmony, does it then, is there, is there then a possibility that there are certain acts that can redeem an individual? 
How about this? Are there certain acts that can redeem humanity? Show a single act that can show the best of us and give us inspiration and give us hope. Yes. I realized this when I was at church and I was staring at the cross and then I imagined what Jesus went through. I'm not trying to preach. I'm not very religious. I, I, I study philosophy a lot more than I study religion, but just bear with me here. Everybody turned against Jesus Christ and they turned him into the authorities to be tortured, whipped, um, stripped down, embarrassed. Everything you could imagine, the worst things that could happen to an individual were done to Jesus Christ, right? And he was put on this extreme torture device and he was nailed there for everyone to see. And yet he never turned against humanity. Not only did he not turn against humanity, but he looked up into the sky and begged his father, begged the Lord not to take revenge. They know not what they do. And his closest people abandoned him. All of humanity abandoned him. And they tortured and they whipped him in the worst way. And he didn't succumb to resentment. He didn't succumb to hate. He didn't succumb to wrath or revenge or anything. He actually looked at the people perpetrating and in his, in his last minutes, in his last hours, because again, I'm not a historian of religion, he asked the all-powerful not to take revenge, for they know not what they do. If there is ever an act that displays the best of humanity and what humanity is capable of, forgiveness in the face of absolute malevolence and torture it's that right there and it makes absolute logical sense because we all understand what happens when we act in certain ways that just drive us to uh drive us to lose our own autonomy to bring it back around the moral law that beautiful moral law that inspired kant's awe may be the only thing that we can follow that truly frees ourselves because then other than that we are slowly becoming jackasses on the island of uh what was it called the um on pleasure island all right i think that's a great place to stop uh, i'm gonna talk to geppetto and finish up here and then we'll end or am i supposed to go i might have to, i might be able to go to the hotel right let's see so yeah, I'll go back to the hotel and end, so that way you folks aren't uh, you folks aren't missing anything. Okay, so this is once again the professor of HD philosophy signing off to say, take some time with the classics, because in a way they can awaken that hidden dragon within all of us. Take care, everyone, and see you in the next episode.